what he was mentioning when he was talking about a very great scholar in Islam. Great scholar in a sense, not just any subject, mastering any subject, but he was known as the Muhaddis Azam of Pakistan. Muhaddis is that person when he looks at the hadith of our Nabi Muhammad Mustafa or even if you have to relate the hadith of our Nabi he is able to relate the whole chain coming direct from our Nabi Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala and for him to have the title as Muhaddis Azam Pakistan the greatest Muhaddis in the whole of Pakistan it's not a small thing. Beshak, beshak. And you and I know the revival of Islam, the revival in the 13th century was known as Ala Hazrat, oh. Imam Ahmad Raza Khan, the Rabbi oh. Rahmatullah. Oh. And he had one Khalifa. Oh. And that Khalifa was Hazrat oh. Mufti Azam, oh. Mulana Muhammad Saddar Ahmad Sahib, oh. Qadri Damal Barkat Mullah Ali. Oh. And from his students oh. was my Ustad. Allah. Sayyid Hasinuddin Shah Sahib Al Hassani Wal Husseini Dam Al Barkatum Al Adiyah. In his words, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept his hazri as well today Ameen. on our behalf. Ameen. I give you a few words detailing to the hadith that I have recited. But the words that came out from my Ustad's mouth, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the sadaqah and wasila of these words. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give his ustad, Muhammad Azam Pakistan, the greatest darja in Jannah. So my ustad says, when he talks about the zikr of our Nabi Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayka wa sallam, like how the hadith states, zikrul anbiya'i min al-ibadah. When you make zikr of a Nabi, it is actually making ibadat of Allah. And when you make zikr of his salihin, of those that were close to Allah, you're actually washing your sins away. So inshallah today, through the sadaqah and wasila of these great awliya, these great ulama, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our ibadat here today. Amen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wash our sins away, Amen. inshallah ta'ala. My ustaz says, Vonu, jisse chamakti thi teri pishan. Vonu, jisse chamakti thi teri pishani. Usi ki thi mein talib aur usi ki thi mein divani. Magar mein kya karu? Ki aaj kismat meri puti hai. Suna hai ki amina ne wo dolat se puti. My brothers in Islam, we must thank the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To the sadaqah and wasila of this only Allah, we have a chance to listen to the greatness of our Nabi Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayka wa sallam. Everything in our lives, my brothers in Islam, everything, no matter what you look at, it has to have some kind of attachment to something. And when you have an attachment to something that is great, automatically you become great yourself. Oh. So my Ustad, he says, that when Hazrat Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala, who the father of our Nabi Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayka wa sallam, when he used to do business, he used to trade, he used to go from one town to the other town and they used to trade, they used to barter. And it was said he goes to this one town and a lady looks at him and goes to him and says to him, Hey Abdullah, I want to marry you. He says, No, you're mad. He says, No, I want to marry you. And he pushes, pushes her away, keeps her far away from him. And as he does his business and he finishes his business there and he goes back to Makkah to Mukarramah, it is said that he gets married to Bibi Amina radiallahu ta'ala anha, who is the mother of our Nabi Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayka wa sallam. So it is said he gets married to her and the second time now he goes to the same city to do trade, to do this barter. He sees that the same lady that wanted to marry him, she didn't really want to leave him out of her sight. Today when she looks at him, she turns her face away. <laughs> One minute the lady wants to marry him, doesn't want to leave him, doesn't want to leave him out of his sight. And the next minute she sees him, she doesn't want to look at him. It's my baat kya. And that is where my ustad explains ke baat kya hai. Baat asal mein ye tha, ke wo noor, 
जिससे चमकती थी तेरी पिशानी उसी की थी मैं तालिब और उसी की थी मैं दीवानी oh. उसी की थी मैं तालिब दैट इज व्हाट आई वांट उसी की थी मैं दीवानी दैट इज व्हाट आई वाज गोइंग क्रेजी अबाउट मगर मैं क्या करूं व्हाट कैन आई डू कि आज किस्मत मेरी पुटी है माय किस्मत इज ब्रोकन कि आज सुना है कि आमीना ने वो दौलत उससे लूटी है आई हर्ड दैट बीबी आमीना हैड टेकन द दौलत अवे फ्रॉम माय ब्रदर्स इन इस्लाम द निस्बत 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 इज अ ग्रेट थिंग That nur of Nabi Mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam was transferred from Hazrat Abdullah radiyallahu ta'ala anhu into Bibi Amina radiyallahu ta'ala anha. And you all know that my Nabi Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he was born his father had passed away. Who's that here? So she was pregnant, heavily pregnant with our Nabi Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And you and I know that if a lady's husband passes away She's not allowed to wear any type of attar, any type of perfume, and she's not allowed to walk anywhere in the roads where men can see them. But it was said that Bibi Amina radiallahu ta'ala anha one day after the husband passes away, she needs something from the market, so she goes into the market. And as she walks in the galleys of Makkatul Mukarramah, it is said each and every merchant, they turn to look. Why they looked? It was said, that in Makkah to Mukarramah in those days, the people were mahirs, experts in making attar. One time they'll smell it, they'll say, this is, this attar is from here. This is where the root is. This is where it comes from. This is where it comes from. But today when they smell this attar that's coming from Bibi Amina radiallahu ta'ala anha, even they could not understand where this type of smell is coming from. Oh, oh, oh. They go to Hazrat Abdul Muttalib, they say, hey Abdul Muttalib, go and ask her. Go and ask your daughter in number one, why is she wearing attar? And number two, go and ask her where she got this type of attar because it is a type of attar which we never smelt before in our life. Oh. Allahu Akbar. Allah. She goes back to Bibi Amina. He says, Ya Bibi Amina, tell me. The people want to know that why when you're walking in the streets of Makkatul Mukarramah, there is a certain type of smell that is coming out of you. A smell that they have never smelt before in their life. Where did you get this type of attar from? Where did you get it from, Bibi Amila? And she says, oh my father, what can I do? What can I do? From the time I conceived this child inside me, Kudaki Kasam, the smell is coming out of my body automatically through the Sarka and Wasila of my Nabi Muhammad Mustafa, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alika wa Sallam. Adam the Sardar Ahmad Sah Rahmatullah Alay, Sayyid Jamaat Ali Shah Rahmatullah Alay, they live Kudaki Kasam for the Sarka and Wasila of our Nabi Muhammad Mustafa, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alika wa Sallam. Each and every step that they took, Kudaki Kasam, they always respected and kept the name of Nabi Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayka wa sallam high that is why Qudaki Qasam even in South Africa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought a fakir like Hazrat Mulay al-Raja to take the name of Sardar Ahmad sahab rahmatullahi ta'ala Wallah we are sitting here to make zikr of those that uphold upheld the name of Islam those that uphold held the name and the muhabbat of our Nabi Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayka wa sallam throughout their whole lives my brothers in Islam ye nisbat ki baat let me go further for nisbat nisbat kya hai if you got no nisbat kuch bhi nahi milne wala beshak in how they say Allah is more closer than your juggler we نحن أقرب من حبل الوريد. Allah is more closer than your juggler we. But Qudaki Qasam, Jannat is only for those that have love for Nabi Mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Because that Jannat cannot be attained without the love of Nabi Mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And even your ibadat Qudaki Qasam is not accepted if you do not have complete love and devotion towards Nabi Mustafa sallallahu taala alaihi wasallam more than your family, more than your money, and more than anything else in this dunya. Wa Allah. Allah Sahib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says very clear. People are saying, why that Mulana is screaming? What did he say? I say in Arabic too. Authentic Hadith. لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من والده وولده والناس أجمعين أو كما قال الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يؤمن إذا كان لا 
until you have that complete love and devotion to us Nabi Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayka wa sallam more than your family, more than your money, and more than anything else in this dunya. Subhanallah. Then how are you going to stand in the musallah and say you have a complete love and oh, devotion? Oh, 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 oh. What ibadat are you making? Carry on making exercise up and down. Wow, wow, wow. Without the love of Nabi Muhammad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not accept anything. We think that namaz we are reading, we are very good. We read five times namaz, we think we did everything. Khuda ki kasam, shaitan also made ibadat. Shaitan never even leave this much of place where he didn't make ibadat. Where he didn't put his head down on sajda. More than you and I, even if we live right till the end of our life and we make ibadat every single day, it will not be enough. To compare to how much of ibadat shaitan made, but what happened? Ibadat ek ba ek dera, izzat and muhabbat aur. If you have love for Nabi Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that namaz of yours will be accepted. Oh, Subhanallah. Allah doesn't need namaz. Beshak. Allah don't need rosa. Allah don't need zakat. Allah doesn't need anything from you. Allah only wants to see how well you perfect the sunnah of his beloved Nabi Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayka wa sallam. The whole life, the whole life of Islam is all about muhabbat. Muhabbat and love from Nabi alayhi salatu wa sallam. If you have that, you have Islam and you will have Jannah. Subhanallah. People are saying to us today that Nabi alayhi salatu wa sallam, Ma'az Allah is dead. Ma'az Allah. We cannot get anything from somebody that's dead. But the miracle of my Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is so great. By having nisbah with Nabi Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for anything, Khuda ki kasam, that will never fade. Right to the day of Qayyama, it will never fade. You know, it is said when Bibi Amina radiallahu ta'ala raha had Nabi Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in her womb, she had that smell that was coming out from her body. Khuda ki kasam, she didn't know where that smell came from. Nobody could understand. But that smell was coming through the sadqa and wasila of our Nabi Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayka wa sallam. You want to see the miracle of my Nabi Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayka wa sallam. Even today, Khuda ki kasam go to the grave of Bibi Amina radiallahu ta'ala alayka wa sallam. Which is in between Madinah to Munawwara and the battle of Badr. Khuda ki kasam go and pick up that sand. You will get the same smell that was coming out from my Nabi Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayka wa sallam. So many thousand years ago even up to today. یہ محبت کی بات ہے یہ محبت کھان دائیں یہ محبت کھان کے سٹے بچے محبت کے نونڈی انکریس میں اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی تو دے صدقہ اور وسیلہ اور دیس گریٹ اولیات میں اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی کی بات سرو محبت دینا و حاصل کو نبی مصطفیٰ صلی اللہ تعالی علیہ وسلم اور میں اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی اکسپٹ اور عبادت میں اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی فقیب اور سنس تیرے میں اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی تو دے سنس وسیلہ اور صدقہ اور دیس گریٹ اولیاء دی گریٹ علماء می اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی give us happiness and peace in our life انشاءاللہ وتعالی what do you mean by Bajabir what do you mean by Sumi Saab رضی اللہ مولانا راجا رحمت اللہ تعالی ان کو لمی عمر عطا فرمائے he has brought Sumi at the live in this place واللہ and now to his صدقہ I'm going to say a few words May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take out the doubt in your mind, in your heart when it comes to the awliya and the great scholars of Islam, inshaAllah ta'ala. Say, what did Mulana do? He's calling people to remember people that came before us. The murdai. You see? Murdai. What can they do for us? My brothers in Islam, why do we go to the mazar for what? What are we getting there? Where did we learn this from? You know, he said, whatever we believe in our hearts, in our minds, in the religion of Islam, we take it from the Quran and the Hadith. If it is not from the Quran and the Hadith, we don't believe. Now, I give you a Hadith of my Nabi Muhammad, a Mustafa, sallallahu ta'ala alayka wa sallam, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you the understanding of this Hadith, an authentic Hadith, absolutely no doubt. Why there's no doubt? Because one day, our Nabi Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting. Authentic hadith. He was sitting in his bargah in Madinah to Munawwara. And he had his sahaba ikram, his companions around him. And who was around him? That was a classroom for him. 
Whatever he wanted to say, whatever he wanted to teach, the masjid in Medina to Munawwara was a classroom. And who was sitting there? Not you and I. Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala and present. Hazrat Usman al Ghani present. Hazrat Ali present. Hazrat Umar Farooq present. The four Sahaba Ikram. Hazrat Abdullah ibn Masood is sitting. Other Sahaba Ikram are present. Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam is narrating and he says, Hey Abdullah ibn Masood, write up to, write. See, what do I write here, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Come, I tell you about a man, a man in the time of Allah Musa alayhi salatu wa salam. Allah, they are saying today, we, I'm to ask you, but say, what do we know? We're running to the mazar, we're saying, Ya Allah, help us to the sarqa and wasila of the audiya. People are asking us, where did we learn this? Hazrat Muhammad Siyazam Pakistan, Rahmatullah, they hear hadith from What does he say? He says in the hadith, it says that Nabi Ali Salatu was Salam is sitting and he is narrating. Hazrat Abdullah ibn Masood radiallahu ta'ala is writing. And who were the witnesses? Abu Bakr Siddiq, Usman al Ghani, Ali radiallahu ta'ala, Hazrat Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala, Jameel al Qadr sahabi, my Nabi Muhammad ibn Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa said, My sahabis are like stars. Anyone that follows the stars, they will be successful, Allah. They will enter Jannah al Firdaus. Nabi Ali Salatu wa Salam says, Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati khulafa al rashidin. There will be 72 to 73 sects that will come in Islam. Only one will enter Jannah. When Nabi Ali Salatu wa Salam was asked, Ya Rasulullah, sallallahu ta'ala alayka wa salam, ma huwa Ya Rasulullah. He says, Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati khulafa al rashidin. That person who followed my sunnah and that person who followed the sunnah of the four khalifas of Islam are rightly guided and they are the ones that will enter Jannah to Firdaus, inshallah ta'ala. So who was sitting? Khulafai Rashidim were present. Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam says, Can I tell you about this story about a man? That was the same here. Where are Allah going to accept our guna, our sawa? Where are Allah going to accept if we ask for sas or maaf? We think to ourselves like that. But my brothers in Islam, Allah's raham, Allah's mercy is infinite. Khuda ki kasam, if your iman is wrong today, ask Allah for maaf. Wallah, Allah will forgive you and Allah will put you in the straight path. Ask Allah today, Ya Allah, give us that light of the only Ya Allah in our hearts. To the great only Ya, to the great ulama, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the sadaqah and wasila of the glimpse and the true muhammad of our Nabi Muhammad and Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayka wa sallam inshaAllah ta'ala. He says, come and tell you about the man that had killed 99 men, cold-blooded, 99 men. Where is going? He died, where is going? Cold blooded. No reason. Just kill them like that. You're not allowed to take life of anyone. Just like that. But he did it. 99 men. And Nabi Ali Salatu Islam says, Sahabi, this man killed 99 men. Now he's on the road looking for somebody and looking for the way for Allah to forgive him for killing 99 men cold blooded. Says he walks for some time. He comes to a man who is a rahib. In the old days, a rahib is known as a priest, person who has knowledge of the book. So he says to him, You know, brother, I have killed 99 men cold blooded. No reason. Is there any way Allah will forgive me? Is there any way you can show me where I can ask Allah through that way and Allah will forgive me for doing this? He looks at him and he says, 99 men, cold blooded, you're going to Jahannam. He says, if I'm going to Jahannam, I killed 99, let me kill you also, make it 100. Hadith of Nabi Ali Salatu Salam. He killed him also. He made round figure, 100 men he killed now. Now he's walking in search for somebody to show him how to ask Allah for forgiveness. We want to know why we're going to the Mazar. Why are we making the horse of great Oliya, great Olama? What is the reason? I tell you the reason. We're going to the Mazar, we know how to go People are saying to us, Nahnu min wareed. Allah is more closer than your Jagila vein. That is no problem. Allah can be even closer than the Jagila vein too. But how clean are you? How great are you? How close are you to Allah? 
closer than my Nabi? Okay, no. What Allah says, if you love me, love my Nabi first. Kul in kuntum, tuhibun Allah, fattabi'uni yuhibkum Allah. If you love me, love my Nabi first, I'll love you automatically. Allah has a way of showing you, my brothers in Islam, don't take out those blinkers from your eyes and look, open your eyes and look and see how much Allah loves his Habib and who are you and I. We are nobody. So he says, this man, he goes and he kills a hundred men and he's walking. And he meets a man who knows of a place not far away from there. And he says to him, you know, brother, you killed a hundred men. That to cold blood had no reason. Very bad thing. But you know what? Not far from here where we are standing, there is a town where the only Allah, the people are sitting and making ibadat of Allah. Go there. Go and sit down there. Maybe today sadaqa Allah will forgive you. Allah will forgive Go there and see. It is said, this man is happy inside him. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam says, after he hears it, he takes one step. Allah sends Malak al maut to come. When Malak al maut came, the angels of Jannat came. The angels of Jahannam came. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam says to the Sahaba Ikram, while they are standing there, the angels of Jannat are fighting with the angels of Jahannam. The angels of Jannat say he must go into Jannat. The angels of Jahannam say he killed a hundred men, he must go into Jahannam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saw this altercation between the angels and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called them back to his court. He says, come here. He says, Ya Allah, the angels of Jahannam say we went because he killed a hundred men cold-blooded. Allah calls the angels of Jannah, he says, why did you go? He said, Ya Allah, he had in his heart the intention for asking for forgiveness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at the angel and says to the angels, you know what? Go back to the ground. But this time you must measure the ground. From that place where you heard about the only Allah. From the place where you heard about those that are sitting and making ibadat of me. From the time he has heard about those that are my friends. From that point, measure the ground. If he is closer to that place of the only Allah, take him and go into Jannah. Uh. But if he is farther away from it, take him and go into Jahannam. Now if you look at this, my brothers in Islam, you would see that after he heard, he took one step. So where is he closer? He's far away from the Basti, from the town of the only Allah. But he's closer to that man. So if the angels measure, they'll take him and go into Jahannam. But look at how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves his wali. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ Allah helps the awliya in this world and the akhirah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he sent the angels down to the earth, my Nabi Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayka wa sallam said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the ground to pull itself together and make it more closer to the basti of the awliya because he had the intention in his heart to go to the awliya and to the sadaqah and wasila of the awliya and forgive him, take him and go into jannah. That's why we are sitting here, my brothers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the himmat, the hidayat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the love and muhabbat for the awliya Allah. And you must always remember what Allah Hazrat says, Tu zinda hai wallah, tu zinda hai wallah, Amare jashme alam ke chup ja ke wale. My brothers in Islam, Islam itself is not about the akal. Islam is all about the love of Nabi Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you have that kudaki kasam, you have everything. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the sarqa and wasila of the awliya Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the sarqa and wasila of those great ulama. Give us their muhabbat, give us their strength so that we can also try and uphold the love and dignity of our Nabi Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam till the day of qiyamah. Wa ma'alayna illa al-balad mubin. Jazakumullah khair.